Hey kids, it's the Mr. Nuflar here. Hope you're well. Haven't spoken for a while, been a little while uh, since it's been out on the bike. It's uh, been too flipping cold, frankly. It's not particularly warm today. Uh, I think it's forecast to be five degrees today centigrade, um, but it apparently feels like minus one in the wind chill. So we'll see how I get on with the uh, with the riding until the hands freeze up. But uh, the aim of today's uh, vlog is just to take you around some of the local area just to uh, point out to you or show you some of the uh, local features of interest with regards to things that have been used either in as film locations or maybe uh, famous people perhaps live there so I just thought it'd be something different to do it's quite a nice part of the country um, so I thought I'd share with you some of that uh, so stick around stay tuned and uh, and let's see what we can find so first uh, point to note is uh, well, I don't know if you can actually see it, but that building up ahead, way in the distance there, at the sort of vanishing point, with the uh, with what looks like a church with a golden ball on the top of it, that is the uh, mausoleum at the top of, uh, uh, of, well, a place called West Wickham, the uh, unfortunately titled West Wickham, I'll explain why in a minute. Um, but that's uh, a mausoleum that uh, denotes uh, a place called the Hellfire Caves. Now, I can't for the life of me uh, remember who the... Uh, who the people were responsible for the Hellfire Caves, but the reason I mention it is um, because back in the uh, in Victorian times, the Hellfire Club was based there, and uh, the Hellfire Club was notorious at the time as a place of uh, much strange goings on, general uh, outrageous behaviour, debauchery, that sort of thing, um, and it was uh, it was one of those places that. Uh, dodgy aristocrats went to get their kicks but uh, that's what the Hellfire Club was famous for. Uh, anyway I'll probably get home and, and find out uh, actually who set it up but uh, I can't remember at the moment but that building at the top there that you may be able to see now uh, is the top of where the Hellfire Caves are. More on that in a moment. So here we go as we come up to the roundabout now you might get a better view of uh, the uh, mausoleum at the top of the hill there. The hill in which the Hellfire Caves are. The home of the uh, former infamous Hellfire Club and uh, I said I was going to say why uh, why West Wickham is uh, poorly named West Wickham and that's uh, well simply my reason West Wickham itself as you'll see if it wasn't for the scaffolding here and unsightly uh, cladding on that building uh, is actually a rather splendid and charming little uh, little town uh, just to the west of High Wickham um, and that's the reason why it's got um, well, it's unfortunately named in my mind because it's a lovely little place, but it has the word Wickham in its title. And uh, for anybody that knows High Wickham will know that it's not particularly a picturesque place. Um, not that it's terrible, but, uh, you know, it's better than Slough, maybe. Uh, no offence to anyone who lives in Slough. But it's, uh, you know, not up there with, uh, I don't know, Marlow or somewhere. Anyway, so there we are. That's, that's uh, West Wickham. Don't know uh, anybody famous that lived here, but worth mentioning because of the Hellfire Caves. You can see it on the sign there, look, Hellfire Caves. More bikers out enjoying the sunshine and cold weather. OK, uh, not quite sure the next stop will be, but as soon as I get somewhere of interest, I shall let you know. Speak to you soon. How cold it is, there's still snow on the ground in the trees. Absolutely perishing out here. Incredible last day of March. Don't know it's so cold for this time of year. Right, Ipstone. What's famous about Ipstone, you may wonder? Well, uh, if you're a fan of the film Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, uh, that's where this one comes in. Because uh, Ipstone is uh, the place where the windmill from that very film is. So I don't know if you remember that uh, Dick Van Dyke had a workshop where he built Chitty Bang Bang and it's next to a windmill where he lived with his annoying couple of kids. Uh, and that windmill is actually just up here on the right and I'll be riding by it in a moment. Uh, we might get a view of it in a second. In fact, when I come around the corner, uh, there's quite a lot of uh, film locations around here. I'll, I'll explain why in a minute. Wait, thank you. So it's just down here, if I remember rightly, is the ridge off to the right that uh, presumably Chitty Bang Bang flew over on many occasions. And then uh, just up here, around this corner I think, uh, we should get a view of the windmill any second. No, not quite this corner, but in a moment, but there's that cracking view. 
go down there in a minute because there's some more uh, filming locations down there I want to show you. Ah, there we are, there's the windmill. So it just tucked in there. You'd never know, would you? Cobstone Mill, it's called. And that's uh, where Dick Van Dyke did his thing. Excellent. And who's not a fan of Chitty Bang Bang? What a great film. Okay, so that was the first location I wanted to show you. Stand by for another one in a moment. So just down the road now from uh, where we passed the windmill into the village of uh, Turville. Uh, and this has been used as a location for stuff in the past. There's a great pub here. Uh, and we might get a view of the windmill on the hill, actually. I'll just uh, stop up here and show you uh, where the windmill is. Is it just up there? Hopefully you can see that. Uh, so yeah, that's where Dick Van Dyke did his thing. Okay, but uh, the reason really why I've come down here is to show you this village. Um, I don't know if you recognise it at all, but if you're a fan of the Vicar of Dibley, you will do, because this is where that's filmed. So if we just come round here, uh, that church is, of course, the church of the Vicar of Dibley. Uh, I'll try to look to see where she actually lives. Just stand by. Getting fogged up in the visor. So yeah, one of these uh, one of these cottages was used. It might even be that one there. Was used as uh, as the home of the Vicar of Dibley, or is it that one there? I don't know. Oh, look kind of familiar. That lovely little village. Turville it's called if you're ever in the area. So there we are, well worth a visit. Uh, if nothing else, just for that pub of a, of a summer's evening that sells a cracking pint of Breakspears Ale, which is the local ale around here. So that is all I want to show you there. The home of the Vicar of Dibley. Stand by for the next uh, famous location. cyclists about today. They must have been colder than me, mind you. They are doing exercise, so perhaps not. Okay, let's keep going this lot. Okay, so here we are, just going up to the uh, lovely little Buckinghamshire town of Marlow now. Uh, great little place on the River Thames maybe not quite as posh as it's uh, maybe more famous rather Henley but nonetheless I like it a lot so let's go and have a look what a bustling little town even on a uh, bank holiday weekend mind you it is a Saturday so Marlow uh, what's it famous for uh, not entirely sure what it's famous for, actually I think I may have come the wrong way here. But uh, it's had lots of famous residents in its time. Uh, in the past, C.S. Eliot lived here, but then didn't he live everywhere? Uh, also of Frankenstein fame, Mary Shelley. She uh, she was a famous Marlow resident. More recently, uh, Robbie Williams. He's uh, He's got a place here, apparently. As has Jonathan Ross. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's got some famous connections. I'm going to turn around because I've come the wrong way in fact. I came out on a slightly different road to what I thought. So I'll turn around and show you the river. So yeah, here we are going the right way through Marlow now. Um, as you can see it's quite an oldy worldy town. It's been around for a while. In fact it's got a connection, I can't remember exactly what it is, with uh, William the Conqueror. I believe it was mentioned in uh, dispatches uh, associated with him, so that goes back away. And also um, there's some debate as to whether Jane Seymour uh, actually had a had a home here. 
There's a place called Seymour Hall in Marlow, and they think there's a there's a link there. But I like Marlow um, the best about. It's got some great uh, pubs and bars. Uh, it's a lovely spot down by the river. Some nice walks and stuff. Really nice place. If you're ever in the area, well worth a visit. Not in this traffic though. Nice car. Wasn't wrong when I said it was busy, was I? Though this is probably the main street in Marlow, which is the one that leads up to the river, which is where lots of the good pubs are and restaurants, as well as some quite nice little designer shops and so on. Wow, Banana Rama, Howard Jones, Midjur. There's some names from the past. Get to the Cookham Festival, see that lot. <laughs> A couple of traffic. What a lovely little place though. Let's see why it's so popular. And very expensive, of course. Then isn't it everywhere in this part of the country. Okay, so just coming up to the river now. The bridge, I should say, that goes over the river. What's this fella doing? at Marlow. It's weird down there. Nice spot. Thank you sir. Complete angler on my left. Lovely uh, hotel here. And uh, there's a sign there to Bisham on the left which is uh, famous. Well in fact this is Bisham. Famous, well it used to be famous because it housed the uh, Bisham Abbey uh, Sports School which was the base of the England football team. I think last year though they moved to a new purpose built centre up north uh, so I can't claim that one anymore. Okay so, uh, so that was Marlow, where will our travels take us next? Stay tuned! So here we are next place, super busy. Come up to it and very bumpy on these uh, on these road markings, which I'm having to use because it's uh, nightmare traffic. But anyway, we're coming up now to the uh, splendid, I think technically we're in Oxfordshire now, um, town of Henley. Uh, Henley on Thames, of course. Uh, again, a lovely place, better in the summer. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but uh, let's quickly show you that. As the way speaks in traffic. We're stuck behind a tractor, that's why we've got the traffic, okay. Actually, it's not just the tractor, it's heavy traffic generally. People trying to get into Henley for, I don't know what they're doing actually, shopping, check out the restaurants, all the sightseeing, aren't they? Oh yeah, there's the Oxfordshire sign, so actually technically I'm in Buckinghamshire at the moment. Oxfordshire in a moment in this shortly. So here we are, just coming into uh, Henley on Thames, and uh, in fact crossing the Thames. Splendid little place that it is. Actually it's not that small, so it's a lovely town. It's uh, got a few famous residents I suppose, or has in the past, I guess it's most famous resident of the past is uh, George Harrison, the Beatle. Uh, he lived here for some time, in fact I think right up until his death, uh, sadly uh, about five or six years ago. Uh, he was a Henry resident. Um, and then of course the other I guess most famous Henry resident has to be uh, Sir Steve Redgrave, the Olympic rower. Uh, trains here. Uh, I say resident, I don't actually know if he lives here. I'm making an assumption there. But along the river here, there is a uh, there's a statue to him. Um, I suspect he lives close by, if not actually here. 
once again, like uh, like Marlow, it's slightly uh, uh, overshadowed, rather. Very, very busy. But uh, understandably so, it's a, it's a lovely spot. Nice car. Who cares about double yellow lines when you've got Ferrari? Run there. <laughs> okay, so through the one way labyrinth that is uh, Henley. Well, just thought of another uh, famous resident of Henley. In fact, another couple. Uh, one is Ross Braun of Formula One fame, the uh, team principal of Mercedes, uh, and of course used to be a Braun. Um, and another one is Michael Parkinson, I believe he lives in Henley as well. So uh, there we go. I knew there were some living people that lived here. So I think I've found my way out now again. I can see the river ahead. officially say it, I am now coming frozen solid. My hands are absolutely perishing. So we're going to start to head my way home now before I actually turn into a nice block. The river's looking extremely high today. Not much rowing activity going on. Okay, back over the Thames towards our last port of call for this trip anyway. Nice Ducati, hello. Okay, so the next town that uh, is coming up into now. Another one which is quite nice. We've just travelled east from uh, Henley, about, I don't know, 10 miles I suppose. Uh, just coming into Maidenhead now, which is the the last of the sort of uh, pleasant Thames towns, if you like, before you start to hit the uh, the build-up uh, as you get towards London. Uh, if you go over the bridge at uh, Maidenhead, you end up in Slough and, uh, well, say no more. Um, however, Maidenhead itself, once again, delightful little town. Uh, not that little, actually. Um, quite a reasonable shopping centre. Uh, all sorts of stuff here. Quite a bit of industry as well. I used to work here for a while. Uh, it's a good place to work, uh, everything here you need, and, uh, and like I say, it's uh, again on the river, so there's a very pleasant riverside which I'll, uh, I'll take you up and show you now. So here we are, just coming up to uh, Maidenhead Bridge now, and if you go uh, straight on over that bridge, as I mentioned, then you end up very quickly in Slough, uh, so that's best avoided. Um, but if you go this way, strange looking lady curiously pleasant though. If you go this way, uh, you end up at uh, Maidenhead Riverside, as denoted by those signs you might have just seen, which is a nice place for a stroll of a summer's evening. Uh, not so much of a flipping cold back end of winter, early spring as it is now. Well, late spring actually, but the weather, as I said earlier, has been appalling. So yeah, so here we are, River Thames again. This is Maidenhead Riverside. Uh, all sorts of stuff you can do here. There are walks, there's boats you can hire, um, there's a little island up here that you'll see in a minute um, with a nice restaurant on it with uh, nice verandas and there's a weir and uh, you can even walk around the little island which is all good fun. So a very pleasant place just to uh, spend an hour or two, people watching or whatever. Not as many people to watch today because they're more sensible because they're all indoors by their fires. So yeah, here's the uh, here's the island with the restaurant on it. Alters Lock, it's called. Keep meaning to go in there. I haven't done yet to the. Uh, I've been onto the island, but uh, never actually the restaurant. And that island there, I believe I'm right in saying, um, Richard Dimbleby used to live on there. Yeah. Not sure.
sure. Oh, I think that. I think I might have read it on a plaque there. So there we go. That's Maidenhead. Uh, and that's it for now, folks. Um, hope you've enjoyed the tour around with us. Uh, hopefully, next time you come out on the bike, it'll be a little bit warmer. Uh, and I'll take you to maybe some other local sites. Anyway, in the meantime, stay safe, ride safe, keep warm, speak to you soon. This has been the Missenden Flyer.